Hey everyone! Hey, we're back for another Gundam lore video and bringing back, hey, my boy Jess! <laughs> hey guys, hope you're doing well. Thanks for watching this beautiful episode of GTS Gundam lore that we have for you today. What do we have today? So, we're going to be, well, before we get back into that really quick, yes, we are going to be talking about our lovely boy on the picture here. It is the Barbados, but once again, we're pulling up all the information from GundamFandom.com. So by all means, if you want to check your references, please, please do. You can or bug me later on in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, definitely go check them out. They're doing beautiful work over there. Yeah, but yeah, let's get going. And yes, our beautiful boy, and I know Jess's favorite, it is the Barbados. <laughs> yes, the Barbados. The ASWG08 Gundam Barbados, better known, of course, as the Barbados, which I have here. Mm -hmm. Look at him. He's gorgeous. He's one of the best Master Grades ever, but we'll talk about that some other time. Um, just real quick, I actually, can we just talk about this real quick? It's the Barbados, but I know the fans love to call him Barbie. Right, the Barbie. <laughs> I, am I the only one who calls it that, or I'm pretty sure I've read other people call it the Barbie. I think I have heard a couple comments in there, but you know, I, I I'm a little bit more as the lore guy. Just call him Barbados. <laughs> let's see, let's give yeah. him give him the proper name. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. It's the Barbados, and of course, right here we have a picture of the exciting release of the P Bandai expansion set that just came out, I think, in October. Um, so like over a month ago, and uh, I can't wait to get my hands on one of these guys. But uh, yes. but yeah. Uh, yeah, it is gonna be cool and basically long story short We're gonna be probably gonna be talking and covering all these lovely accessory pieces that goes with that master grade That's coming out for these parts already if you haven't got your hands on it So but yep, let's go down. So we're going through another mecha breakdown. So let's find out what makes this Gundam unique <laughs> Right, so uh oh. <laughs> so what is a Barbados the Gundam Barbados is the eighth well Eighth of the 72 Gundam frames created by Gallahorn near the end of the Calamity War. Well, to counter the fact of some crazy powerful mobile armor and <clears throat> hint hint season two. <laughs> so. Yep. Now, the name Barbatos is very unique because, um, so as we know, Japanese uh, anime likes to borrow a lot of names and mythology and folklore from Western sites, especially European parts, uh, as you can even see on Attack on Titan, but uh, we'll talk about that some other time too. Uh, the name Barbatos uh, is named after uh, demons, and out of the 72 Gundam frames, each one is named after one of those demons. So, yeah, they're all named after demons. Demonology for the win. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought it was weird where they kept pulling out these names out of the hat, but, but hey, yep. let's think about this. Do you know what? This is not the first Gundam Barbados. Uh oh, again. I know. A lot of people don't know about this, so here's the yeah. fun fact starting of the day. <laughs> this, yep. this was, there was another Barbados before the Iron Blood Orphan release back in 2015, which is this bad bird here. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, it's this guy. He was out. Uh, I think he. It's the GGV00 Barbatos. He is one of the variants and the successor to the GGF001 Phoenix Gundam. Hence, why he looks like a chicken. Uh, the Barbatos <laughs> made its first appearance in SD Gundam G Generation World in February 2011. So this was four years before Iron Blooded Orphans. I'm pretty sure Iron Blooded Orphans is from 2015. Yeah. It, it is. I think it released in October 2015. And this is when we had this ugly chicken-looking one. <laughs> uh, definitely. <laughs> An ugly looking Barbatos. <laughs> Thankfully, they improved uh, over four years, right? <laughs> I, I, yeah, they have, definitely. I, I'm not going to complain about the beautiful thing we have nowadays. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, there's your little fun fact started for the day there. And let's get into the breakdown of this. So, I'm going to butcher the name. I'm so sorry. The <laughs> Laya, the Laya Vignana system. <laughs> it is all right close enough it's the alea the alea vignano system there I we think. go <laughs> I, th I think C correct me in the comments because Please. there's some weird shit right here right i watched this series so many times over producing this video <laughs> and i swore i heard the pronunciation like five different ways <laughs> yep yep but, but going into it, it this is basically the main computer okay the organic interface system developed by the great calamity war uh, to maximize the ability of mobile suits, okay? So, yeah. it, it was literally, just to keep it short, you could pause this right now, you could read through everything, but it was designed so you can have the pilot link directly into the frame of the mobile suit at that point. 
using nanotechnology. Yeah. Now, being able to run like completely directly from the computer to you, that's crazy. Like it's beyond crazy mad bioscience variety, I find. It is. And speaking of bioscience, the incomplete version of the Alea Vijana system led to the implant surgery having a low success rate. So they would actually have to implant. If you guys remember, if you guys watch the series, if you haven't, go watch it. It's on Netflix. Um, it had such a low success rate and can only be done at a young age. So um, they just implant it into your spine and it's like you could either die from it from, or no. Yeah, it's die or become like paralyzed, right? If yeah. I'm not mistaken. It's basically nano machines that they actually implant it into the spine and they try to yeah. grow it inside y your spine, but because yeah. of complications and of it, like this, this, yeah. this is all tech, believe it or not. In the series, this system was used in the Calamity War, which then, when we go into the series, it's 300 years later. Yeah. So this is like all lost tech. Yep. Like <laughs> it's crazy. Extremely lost tech. Yep. <laughs> Oh, but oh. going on to the toys. <laughs> ooh, ooh. So the Again. backpack arms on the Barbados. Okay, I love the image of this. Um, like there's your boy there, <laughs> the image. Yeah. So there are two backpack arms on the Barbados, one on each side of right by the thrusters. And basically yeah. what they can be used for, well, you can mount like a ton of weaponry, like as you see here, mm -hmm. and also use them to still like fire weapons like the smooth bore can. So it's really cool and it was able to hold like so much, like probably the smartest backpack I think there's around. <laughs> so Yeah, it's, it had little crab hands, but unfortunately you cannot find this. So we have a picture of the Master Grade there. The, the, that's the backpack. You can move and you can separate those parts from the Master Grade uh, to hold the smooth board uh, ri uh, rifle. But other than that, it doesn't open up like little crab claws or anything. I I, I, you know, I know Derek wishes that would have happened. Well, yeah, I, I would love it because it's shoot, that would be so cool. Make yeah, it so be pretty much sick. Yeah, but yep. let's keep on moving to the fun text. So, All right. So there's some form factors. There's a total of six of them in just the season one of Iron Blooded Orphans. Like, holy shoot, right? <laughs> Look at all of them, yep. Yeah. Um, so the reason we call them form factors is because instead of suits, um, as the core of the unit, uh, so no, I'm sorry. I'm I'm messing this up. I'm getting my information wrong. So form factors because the suit is literally the same underneath all of this stuff. It's literally just the same thing over and over again with different scavenged parts. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Exactly. It's because the fact is like, well, over the entire series, he, he sort of picks things up. <laughs> we'll go through that. All right. Yep. Yeah. We'll go through that. So let's go with number one. <laughs> so, uh yeah. So Barbados was in this form like. Well, when the first episode, when when the entire base got attacked by Gallahorn, and basically, well, the president of the CGS at that time discovered it on Mars, and basically found the Ahab reactor that's inside there. It's still operational, so he just uses like a giant supersized battery for his warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> Believe yeah, he not. does. <laughs> but yeah, that is pretty crazy. Uh, but hey, here's something for you. Fun fact. Uh, hey, we have a fun fact here. The Barbatos Gauntlet, it might have been part of the original equipment from the Great Calamity War. So it's an old, old piece of technology. Yeah. It, part of the first of the show is like, a, that's the one solo piece that was really on there with the shoulder still removed and the cockpit pulled. This was still attached on there. So by all means, we actually still think that was part of the original setup for it. But hint, yeah. hint, we never see it after that. So <laughs> Yeah, you never see it after that. So it's already equipped when the Barbatos was discovered on Mars. Uh, it is thought to be one of Barbatos' original equipment, but it is not complete. Uh, it's like, you know, we're not certain of this. Uh, it is used only by the first and second form yeah. because it was ejected alongside the rest of the left forearm armor during the battle with Gallahorn forces. This yeah. was when they were in space, I think, near Mars Low Orbital Station. Yes. Um, that's, yeah, so that's when they ejected it. And that's the last time we see it, and it's, and it's dead. It's gone. <laughs> It's and, gone. But let's keep on going. Second form. <laughs> so, so the CGS was later. Then after that, well, it became Tekadin after that. Our lovely Orga and the team. Me and yeah, Mikasuki. Mikasuki. So basically what happened is that in, after the first battle, they took down the first grass. There you see here. He basically literally scavenged the shoulders and slapped it on there. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And then painted with, my boy. with white and blue and also painted with some nano laminite armor. 
but well, okay but what does nanomite armor dude nano laminate armor sorry before the comments <laughs> say that i'm pronouncing it wrong nano laminate <laughs> armor what is it so basically a special metal like that reacts specifically with the ahab particles basically with the ahab reactor so it, it's actually a paint it's actually really cool and smart where actually uh -huh. the moment you start up the suit the paint hardens to a point where it actually can disperse like uh, beam, beam weaponry. Basically, it was original yeah. technology designed to fight against the mobile armors back then. And uh, so, now here's something neat: is that it can still break off and peel off, and you can repaint it. But to be honest, it's so smart because you're not replacing full giant armor pieces, right? Yeah, and. I know that when I first started watching Gundam and I looked up what is the strongest, you know, how strong is Barbatos? Because that's what I did when I was, you know, when I first started watching it. And like a bunch of fanboys and people are like, oh, but space are, uh, what is it like uh, paint that can, that is like proof, like what is it, uh, beam saver proof, right? Or something like that. <laughs> and it's like, well, you know, if people are going to just criticize it for just that, I mean, there's so much space magic in the rest of this series that it's like everything can be criticized. But little fun fact here that we have for you is that among the different colors available of this paint white is the cheapest while blue green and purple are the most expensive yeah so hence if you ever look at gallahorn every, every one of their bloody suits are purple or blue or yeah, green they're rich rich buggers right yep quick question derek mm -hmm. uh the cgs sounds a little too weirdly like the cgc are you saying you have a Barbatos hidden somewhere for the Calgary Gumpla community group? Oh, I, who knows? We're close <laughs> enough to it to the, to the final battle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Oh, that was fun. Oh, uh, we'll move to the third form. <laughs> So after the battle with the Galahorn near the low orbital station, the second form is then equipped with the wire claw that he broke off from Galiho's wobbly Graz and then fixed the damaged left arm. That's where we lost that armor piece on the, that was supposedly the original part. But then see, he just tossed it on there. Looks good, eh? Yep. <laughs> it does. It looks very good. So, but that's all there is really to it. And we'll go through that yeah. weapon there. And eventually we get to the point where we, we get this beautiful uh, sort of transport, the Kuton Type 3. Uh, a lot of people, you only seen it for a very short period on the series. <laughs> yeah. And so it's a booster a transport for the mobile suit. It has like large movable arms to grab, gra well, gripping onto like containers and also carry a wide variety of loadouts. Now, yeah. neat thing, it doesn't use an Ahab reactor like your other mobile suits. It just uses like a hydrogen engine, which tells me in their future there, technology is really, really good. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. What well, hydrogen is. fuel is like very efficient and clean. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> but this is really, this is a really cool piece of technology. Um, I wish that a, a master grade version of this because, um, you know, existed. Derek tells me there's a high grade version, but everybody knows that the high grade version Barbatos is uh, far <laughs> inferior to the master grade one. But speaking of this piece of technology, it is built with a pair of Vulcans and movable arms that can also be used for melee combat uh, with options of equipment. Uh, equipping the smoothbore guns as used by Gundam Barbatos. So it is a pretty nice uh, piece of equipment that I wish would have gotten a little bit more uh, spotlight, mm. but uh, unfortunately it did not. Oh, yeah. man. But it looks so good. It's a, it makes it like Barbados, like a mobile armor almost. I said, hold it. Yep. <laughs> yep. This big menacing thing. Yeah. And the thing is, Barbatos is already a huge, like not huge, I want to say a, a far bigger mobile suit than or than like the original ones it is it is a pretty big one i think it's like the size of the unicorn yeah. and um even with that thing on it it's just it would be like this big menacing thing floating to you in space i'd be scared yeah i'd be scared exactly that would be so neat. oh so let's continue the forms the fourth All form right. everyone loves and knows so much especially yeah look at that beauty <laughs> there he is the fourth form of the barba of the barbatos yeah <laughs> So this is really cool. It's like how this, like it's such a big transitional change. It's like basically yep. what happened was like at that time, uh, like the t technicians at Tewas somehow got all like this material and recordings from the past war and somehow recreated. Supposedly this is as close as they get to their original like look of the Barbados back from 300 years in the Great Calamity War. That's crazy. But a little side fact, uh, 
Now, even though it's its closest enough to the state, but this is still not 100%, believe it or not. So that's what they say. So. This isn't even his final form. All right. No. So that's the crazy thing about it. We don't really know what it should be yep. originally after that. But yep. continue on. We all know how pretty he is. <laughs> It's beautiful, yeah. Then all of a sudden they had to do this. Why do they have to do this? They had to add a fifth form. Like, I... Eh, eh. <laughs> I'm a big fan of it. Makes sense, a big chunky boy. So they added the waist booster, redesigned the forearms with the more heavy armors by the Montag group. And then they mm -hmm. also included a crazy, crazy uh, reactive armor to the chest. It was actually designed by his own tech man himself uh, in order to try to deal with Ayn's uh, swabbly grays uh, and yep. a couple other pieces. Yep. And, but yeah, it was a countermeasure. Oh, actually, no, it was designed to counteract against the Camaras. Yeah, at that point, because of mm -hmm. the crazy lance that he was firing around. But, yeah. but after it being used, it was really cool. Uh, but then he also transitioned really quickly at the moment they landed on Earth to a ground form as well. So yeah. it was created with the help of the eco turbines that's on Earth. And basically they changed it around where they took off the main core. They raised up its legs. Here's the funny thing. I don't know if you'll notice it or maybe it's in the expansion set, but they raised up its heel so they actually have a better center of gravity while it's on Earth as well. So, yep. So it looks like it's working on like big high toe like those i mean sorry the heels like the, those boots yeah yep <laughs> he's just strutting <laughs> yep and and then we get to yeah talk about the chest reactive armor it was actually it was very effective against uh galio's uh, well the fight and then basically here's yeah. an image of him fighting it off and actually it did his job he literally took the hit and then it, it grabbed onto the lance so Yep, that's what it's supposed to do, right? Yeah. Um, it's uh, So this is a great countermeasure against the Kimara's hit and run attacks with its gun near Lance. Yeah. It can throw a hit from it and it will and will purge it immediately after, thus repelling the attack. Barbatos can then use the chance to hold onto the Lance and prevent further attacks, which is what we actually see in the fight, which is yes. really cool. Yeah, because Kimara's is stupidly fast for, whatever, for well, the amount of boosters he has on there. I'm amazed yep. they even able to apply it without the Alea of Anyanya system. I'm yep. butchering the name. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, man. All we right. butcher names all the time. So we get to the sixth form that we saw. Uh, basically, you see the fifth form. It was in the final battle where he took a whole bunch of the side skirt and equipments from the Graz Ritter system. Mm -hmm. So what they actually did, which was really cool, is that they actually took the armor and any rem remnants of it and they incorporated it into the chest, into the shoulder, and up to the final battle because it was going to be a long battle. They decided to incorporate all this so then that way they see supply time and also the armor. So, yep. neat idea. So, go ahead. There we go. Let's go to our favorite Ooh, part. <laughs> Ooh, well, this is my favorite part because I love the melee weapons for the Barbatos uh -huh. along with the long ranged ones. Just saying. <laughs> oh. Let's would. get into them. What, what do we got? So let's start with the first one here. Uh, oop, I get didn't get the name right. It is technically the mace. So the Murabe Arke had actually considered using the Barbados for battle. So he kept some equipment around. The mace is one of them. It's a giant large physical weapon. And using the same uh, technology as a nano laminate like armor, he painted it all over on it. It was originally designed to think about a striking weapon, but then they also put the feature where there's a pile driver, a needle that shoots out from the front too, which is it's sick. crazy. Yeah. So, but yeah, it is such a neat, neat system. I just don't know exactly like where in the bloody world this madman came with the design on this. <laughs> It's sick, it's sick, and it's huge. Uh, but it is used, it's used by the first form up to the fifth form. It was lost during the atmospheric entry battle with Gundam Kimaris and was left floating in Earth's orbit. So if you look up in the night sky, guys, you might see it just floating there somewhere. <laughs> it's somewhere there, waiting for Barbatos to return to it. <laughs> just to grab it. Oh, man, that's crazy. <laughs> I, think, I think that's one of the coolest um, designs is the whole pile driver just hitting it and then you know surprise boom right into mm -hmm. like the armor and just cracking it it's it's awesome but speaking of awesome we have another awesome weapon for this which is 
the uh, the long sword. Yeah, it is. So the mobile suit sword, shaped as a katana, it was created with a factory within Taiwa's. I swear, it's like a yakuza group. Yep. And so it was designed to handle due to its lightweight and show superiority during like localized small attacks, so, as a katana should, right? So. Yep. Yeah, the sword is the sword is really cool because the sword's grip is later improved uh, to fit Barbato's hands better, which we can actually see right there, his hands, and to help minimize kinetic energy loss when using the weapon. Uh, due to the high strength of the nano laminate armor, the sword slashes are ineffective. Now, the long sword primarily functions as a backup melee weapon when the mace or the large special mace is available, as Mikasuki finds it hard to use. He finds the mace hard to use. Now. One of the things that uh, that I want to mention real quick, which I think we've mentioned before in other episodes of Lore, is I just need to give my props to Sunrise um, and just the, the the writers of the shows. Is all of these things that we're looking at, they have a purpose. They're not just some random thing that exists. Like the him taking the armor and the weapons, everything has a reason to exist and a reason and a reason why it doesn't exist anymore. And it just keeps evolving. And all the time these guys take to really make sense of the lore is amazing. But yeah, I just really want to give props to Sunrise if they ever watch this. Yeah. You guys did a great job. You always do a great job with the lore. Um, but anyway, let's talk about <laughs> what you really like, Derek, which is guns. <laughs> the smoothbore gun. It's a 300 millimeter caliber gun. <laughs> That is so devastating. And do you know what? Now, sadness is so cool. It was designed to have super amount of power more than accuracy. So saying that, firing a super high speed bullet with a 350 millimeter cal gun, you know, <laughs> you're not really going to be say, yay, I'm going to hit you there. Not really. Yeah. It's a huge shot. So, but it was designed so that if it does land a hit, it like it shatters armor. It like break through nano laminate armor like it was that powerful mm -hmm. and yep. a lot of people might not even notice this is that there's a second there is 60 millimeter machine gun actually at the bottom of it which when it folds up it's actually really awesome too when you're not using so <laughs> now mm -hmm. One thing I do want to mention to something that Derek said is obviously the inaccuracy of this, right? But this was mitigated by the Alea Vignana system. Uh, once that kicks into gear, um, that's when you get the accuracy that you see Mikasuki use this gun with. Mm -hmm. um, that is definitely something that is fixed um, and, and is done right by the Alea Vignana, which a lot of people say that it's a cheat system. Like I, like I read so many like people that don't like the Barbatos try to find a way to say why they don't like it and how it cheats and all of this with the Alea Vignana or in this case Mikasuki. But hey, if you have the technology, use it, right? Mm. Like that's the way it happens. <laughs> Yes, I know, I know, but <laughs> I get it. it. It is part of the series, and it's amazing tech, but it's a very risky yeah. one, too. And it is. keep on going with my guns, the long-range rifle. This one actually is by, used by the Gusan Rubike, which is basically mm -hmm. the modification of the regular Graz 120mm gun, but with Taiwan's, they were able to actually re-engineer it a bit more to give it a scope. And actually a longer extended barrel so actually now you can actually use it properly and mm -hmm. shoot in longer range which yep. actually uh, the Barbados was able to use it he actually was able to utilize that a lot better than I find than the smoothbore gun which is funny <laughs> yep so but those are my favorite there <laughs> oh, and let's go yay some more more lovely little bit of equipment of melee so there was the wire claw that we talked about back from the third form, and which is claw, which basically all it was designed to do is to clamp onto your enemy and pull you in. And yeah. then also the typical close combat battle axe, which a lot of the grass you'll see in the entire series, they all use over and over, which is basically mm -hmm. painted with a nano laminate armor as well. So, so yeah, but yeah, those are pretty basic. Don't you self explanatory? He just has a load of loadouts of melee weapons. And hey, we were yeah. talking about this on the last one of the Alex. Yeah. Uh, so this was originally designed for the Kutan 3, but then they reincorporated it, re 
right into the arms of the Barbados. I don't even think in the model because they ever came with this rig, Jess. I don't think they did. No, sadly, no. That's something I really wished that they would have added even to the Master Grade. Um, is just those those guns right there, there because they're so cool. I mean, like going exactly. It's like it's like some really cool that would have. I mean, I, I would have loved to have seen it. Um, Although seen and used only by the fifth form, the arm mortars can also be used by the fifth form ground type or the sixth form if required. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it, it's really yeah. neat. I actually enjoyed that. And they also, outside of the mortars, they can also be replaced by a pair of auto cannons instead with, with the long extended barrels as well. Yeah, but uh, due to their limited ammunition, and I'm talking about the 170 millimeter auto cannons, they are unsuitable for long range shooting battles, but are highly effective when used in close combat. So it's kind of like going up to somebody and shooting them right in the chest. Mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> this is used by the fifth form ground type onwards. So we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. And we all saw this thing. Uh, yeah, the large special mace, the wrench mace. I thought this was wild. Yeah. Out of all the melee weapons I ever saw, I thought this is so cool looking. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's like this huge chunk of metal that has like a chainsaw thing on it. Jeez. So it's a replacement of the original mace after it was lost during the atmospheric uh, battle. So it was yeah. given the nickname the wrench mace. So it functions as a great striking weapon and then the front, front part of the of the ranch mace sorry can open up and clamp onto the enemy unit so it can actually like grip onto them as hence wrench <laughs> yeah like imagine getting hit by this right because it has a special it has a special chainsaw hidden in the bulbous form part of a uh, portion of the mace that can slice apart the enemy unit and it's used by the fifth form ground type onwards and can be stored on the backpack arm when not in use but sadly the mace was destroyed in combat by the Grace Ian during the battle in Edmonton. But speaking of Edmonton. Oh man. So what happened? So legitimately, like after the battle, like literally the final battle all happened in Edmonton. And we all know our favorite boy. <laughs> he might have been there. Yeah, Ryan Lau took, uh, we want to thank Ryan Lau if he's watching this for taking these pictures of uh, the, the fight go down over there in his neighborhood. Because uh, so for the viewers out there, if you guys don't remember, we're we're situated in Calgary, which is roughly three hours away from Edmonton. So this battle is actually it took place over there. There was a lot lar large coverage of it. But what happened in this battle, Derek? <laughs> the Gundam Barbados participated in this battle with Tekadin, but it accumulated so much damage uh so far that more than any of their regular mechanics were able to repair alongside with the Gusan, they actually had to send both of the mobile suit back to Saise, which is Tewas, to completely go through a full complete overhaul and then eventually becomes our even crazier bad boy, the Gundam Barbados Lupus. Which we will talk about some other time. Yeah. But, uh, oh. but yeah, this battle was crazy. Mikasuki kicked oh. just Oh. Gun them ass in this, oh, in this thing. Well, shoot, this is the point where he actually was able to A, master the katana, A, go overclock crazy using the Lana Vanana system, and then, mm -hmm. like, be able to take out another, like, was it? Well, actually, no, I think it does the great Graz N, they called it. They managed to take out another very sophisticated, sort of like Gundam like frame almost, which is yep. crazy, so. There's a lot of first ups for Misukuki on that one. <laughs> yep. So, yep. let's go with the final take care. <laughs> let's go with it. So, Gundam frames like the Barbados are able to achieve a high energy output because they possess two Ahab reactors. Being fit with the Ilea Vignana system, even a child is able to control this sophisticated piece of machinery. Unfortunately, this is me, the major drawback as the computer system information can cause a huge burden on the pilot with the overload of combat data. With the imperfect Elana Vanilla system, the most pilots weren't able to draw out the peak performance of the Gundam frame, sadly. Yeah, the Gundam frame itself is extremely flexible, being able to incorporate multiple forms in different gear setups. With the pilot being virtually, uh, with with the pilot having virtually no knowledge of utilization when it comes to to the whole thing, like the Barbatos and Leia Vignana, they go really, really uh, well hand in hand. They work together really well. Um, I don't know. It's just I love this suit. It's my favorite suit. I'm gonna say it forever. <laughs> uh, the Barbatos is awesome. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What do you think, Derek? Uh, 
I enjoy the suit. I love the tech. I love the history they actually did into Iron Blood Orphans. I really do. I really do. It just makes me sad that the fact is like so many imperfect tech and pieces and people are like scrounging around to fit everything together. It made me feel yeah. really sad about it because see, like even the system, like what if like back 300 years ago before the, in the great calamity war, right? Like yeah. the perfected system, it was used by adults. Like how much different it is like yeah. without the risks, things like that. Right. I mean, I mean, I think definitely one of the best things like, and then I'll, give credit where credit is due to sunrise like you know Tekken isn't a rich uh organization even with Tewas and everything like that they are they're, they're they're forced to scavenge any form of equipment that they can and just stick it on there uh, so they can get the best you know uh, results from their main frame which is the, the, the barbatos um and so it really goes a hand in hand with the lore even the paint that i didn't know anything about seeing that the barbatos is literally all white and you look at all of these other ones you're like why are, are all the other ones colored but the barbatos is the one doing the the, the white uh, mostly white paint and you, you realize it's cheap it just goes hand in hand it doesn't even have a lot of uh, a decals which i know a lot of people who have the barbatos uh, the master grade really do talk about is like if you really want to stick to that lore side of things you wouldn't put all the decals on the barbatos because he doesn't have them they just didn't have the resources so what if Tekken actually had billions upon billions of dollars to just drop on this guy i don't know i don't know what would have happened dude i would have gone crazy <laughs> you would have but hey <laughs> do you want to, just to wrap it all up this is just to be fair for our next episode that's coming up it's gonna be our Gundam versus because we had to level the playing field for everyone because we talked all the love about my favorite RA Alex and now we gotta talk yep. about Jess's. So yep. we'll catch you guys on the next episode. See ya. Yep. Take care guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you. <laughs> hey GTS fam, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like, remember to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you can see when we put something up immediately. And if you have any questions or comments for us, leave them down in the comments. I promise you that we're gonna read them and I think we do that all the time. So yeah, we hope you guys take care and we'll see you in the next one.